grandma's funeral. Grandmother was dead. She passed away exactly on her 83rd birthday, suffering on the cold hospital bed. That day was a sunny Friday, just a few days into summer. Mother was preparing spaghetti, grandma's favorite dish, when she received the call. She dropped the boiling pot out of shock. My cousin Lenny also bawled. Grandma's dead! Lenny wailed, sobbing uncontrollably. Grief eventually enveloped our house. However, I only fell silent, too shocked to say anything. The day passed by in a blur. Our whole family was busy preparing for the funeral. My parents covered all the mirrors in the house with black cloth. They also forbid us from wearing bright colors and showering. We weren't even allowed to comb our hair. Follow the superstitions. It's better to be safe than sorry, my father warned me. They placed grandma's coffin in the middle of the decorated living room. White funeral flowers surrounded her. Altar candles were also continuously lit. Mother said it was so grandmother wouldn't get lost in the afterlife, and since it was already my summer vacation, my parents told me to guard grandma's body during the four-day wake. In my country, people believe that the casket should not be left alone or bad things will happen. I would sit silently beside grandma's coffin, staring intently at her. I was convinced that I could catch her sneakily opening her eyes if I did so. I didn't believe that she was dead, and so, from time to time, I would sneak my small hands into the casket. Grandma, why won't you open your eyes? I asked, feeling her cold face. On the second day, my cousins from the province arrived. They were the same age as me, barely into puberty. I was itching to play with them, but my parents' warning echoed in my mind. Don't leave your grandma alone or bad things will happen. Telling them this, I refused their invitation to play outside. My cousins, however, only silently stared at me. Eventually, they erupted into laughter. Some of them even repeated my words. Dummy, why would grandma even care about that? She's already dead, one of my cousins taunted. I turned red after realizing they were right. I looked around the living room. All of the adults were outside to entertain the guests. Even Lenny was sleeping upstairs. She stayed beside grandma all night long. Hence, nobody was present to guard the casket. We'll leave you behind, Joy, they warned. I stared at their retreating figures and worriedly looked at grandmother's pale face. The funeral artist really held back on the makeup. I was still fearful of what could happen, but I wanted to play with my cousins. I'll be leaving you for a few minutes, grandma. I promise I'll be back soon. I whispered to her, showing a pinky promise. I hesitantly got up from the white chair and ran after my cousins, shouting to them to wait for me. Minutes eventually turned into hours of playing. I finally came to my senses when I saw the sun setting, staining the scenery with red. I panicked and glanced over my oblivious cousins. They were still playing hide and seek. I'll be leaving first, I yelled, not caring if they heard me. Immediately, I rushed down the steps, but luck clearly was not on my side. I tripped over an imaginary rock and fell, scraping my knees. Ouch! I moaned, wincing in pain. I shakily stood up and ran back to the house while limping. Deep inside, I was desperately praying that my parents didn't notice my disappearance. Funeral visitors crowded around the house. Most were my neighbors. Placing bets and setting card tables, I was accustomed to hold games for their funeral expenses. Some greeted me while others were too focused on their cards. Rushing inside, I almost knocked over a relative who was preparing snacks and coffee for the guests. However, she didn't say a word and only rolled her eyes. I apologized and proceeded to go inside, removing my shoes. Oh, what are you doing over there? My mother immediately bombarded me. Didn't you go to the bathroom? She continued. Surprised at her question, I didn't utter a word. I only stood still like a sore thumb. Mom curiously glanced at me, then uttered a loud gasp when she noticed the scrapes on my knees. Joy, did you trip in the bathroom? After all, you were so out of it earlier. Your dad and I were talking to you, but you wouldn't respond. But we never talked earlier, Ma. I couldn't help but ask, furrowing my eyebrows. She rolled her eyes and got up from the chair beside Grandma, beckoning me to sit on it. Like what I told you, you were so out of it earlier. You kept staring at Grandma's coffin. She looked at me sympathetically. Joy, you know that Grandma wouldn't want you to get depressed over her death. We did everything we could to save her. Mom affectionately patted my head. 
wait here, I'll go get the first aid kit. Not waiting for my reply, she left me in the living room. Still confused about what mother said, I hesitantly glanced over the coffin. However, goosebumps quickly rose over my body when I saw grandma's eyes twitch. I briskly stood up from the chair, nearly knocking over the flowers and candles that surrounded grandma. My knees hurt, but my gaze was transfixed on her face. I couldn't believe what I saw. Don't leave your grandma alone or bad things will happen. Suddenly, father's words echoed again in my mind. I also realized that I broke my promise with grandma. She never liked false promises. Grandma must be angry with me, I thought. I'm sorry, grandma. I won't leave your side again, I muttered, feeling guilty. Over the following days, I was determined not to leave grandma's side. I even suppressed my urge to pee and my hunger, which worried my parents. I was paranoid that something bad would happen. Grandma was scary when mad. During the third day, an overwhelming stench of pee spread around the house. My parents profusely apologized to the visitors, embarrassed. Mother had almost gone crazy finding where the smell came from. In fact, she had disinfected all corners of the house already. Auntie, have you checked grandma's bed yet? Lenny suggested. Mom fell silent and shook her head. Without saying anything, the three of us decided to go upstairs to check grandma's room. And when mother opened the door, the strong odor of pee immediately greeted us. There's a wet patch on the bed, Lenny said, shocked. Joy, did you sleep on grandma's bed because you missed her? She teased, but she looked like she was going to cry instead. Lenny knew I slept beside Grandma's casket last night. Mom silently went to the bed and sniffed it. Then she immediately removed the bedsheet, carrying it in her arms. Let's go down, she said. And while the stench of pee still wasn't totally gone, we didn't say anything more. Finally, the day of Grandmother's burial finally came. My family and I showered in another relative's house before setting off for a nearby town where Grandma will be buried. We dressed in black clothing and watched the men carry her casket. However, minutes passed and they still couldn't lift her casket. Ultimately, several more relatives volunteered to help. She still doesn't want to leave, mother said, wiping her tears with a handkerchief. It's because she died suffering, she continued. I only nodded in response. In fact, it was true. Grandma really suffered before her death. She slipped on the ground two months ago and was hospitalized for weeks. Even the doctors admitted that at her frail age, she wouldn't be able to survive the fall. After coming home, Grandma was never the same. She stopped smiling. She began lashing out at us, especially when we were noisy. Sometimes, though, Grandma would only moan in pain because of her injuries. Grandma had diabetes, and she didn't like wearing diapers. More so, she often peed on the bed, resulting to several festering wounds on her body. And while I often cleaned her, the ants seemed infinite. I would see little red ants coming out of her wounds, pus oozing whenever I used hydrogen peroxide. There, I snapped out of my reverie when they finally lifted grandmother's casket. I also heard the collective sighs of relief from my relatives. Joy, it's time, let's go. Mom held my hand. Remember to not look back at the house. It's bad luck, she warned me. Mm-hmm, I nodded in agreement. The funeral service started playing sad music as the procession began. Holding back my tears, I focused my gaze on the ground instead. And when we reached the bus, mother got on it first. I turned my head to the direction where that sound came from, transfixed to it. However, there was no one behind me. The rest of the mourners were already inside the other buses. Mom and I were on the last one. Suddenly, I remembered their conversation with my dad when I asked him why I shouldn't leave Grandma's side during the wake. Because Grandma may get lonely and stay in the house instead of going to heaven, he said. The music from the procession slowly became faint as the funeral car advanced. However, I stood still my foot stepping mid-air on the bus step. I anxiously waited for that sound again. Psst. Ignoring my mother's words, I decided to sneak a glance at the house. There was an old woman standing beside the gate, staring at me. It was Grandma! Grandma!